I've been looking forward to this. I love Batman Beyond. I love Batman. Most of that is from the DC Animated Universe, which, by dear Terry, is, uh, that's where he shines. Has he been in any other continuity? I don't recall. Let's get started. I did watch a few seconds of the intro to do a sound test, but there we go. Woo! The future. Everyone wants to see it, and why not? It has <laughs> robots, flying cars, and of course, superheroes. Yeah, the future still has those, but they're That's even cooler because so, yeah. of all the sweet gadgets. Like Terry McGinnis, the Batman Beyond. And Miguel O'Hara, the Spider-Man from 2099. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Now, for a second, I thought it was going to be CG. It's going to be like, dude. Terry McGinnis was your average futuristic high school student. He went to future raves, complained about future problems, had a future girlfriend, yeah, you know, the usual. <laughs> Until one fateful day when Terry got into a fight with a group of jokers. What you got against comedians? No, no, a gang <laughs> called the Jokers. You know, like, the Joker. Ah, but with a Z, because it's the future. Well, naturally. After he had a the most dangerous motorcycle chase ever put He's on five foot ten, really? He got a helmet. Terry Damn. found himself inside an isolated mansion owned by an elderly billionaire named Bruce Wayne. Here, he stumbled upon the most important revelation in his life. Bruce Wayne is Batman! Oh, what a surprise! You know who uh, almost like figured it out Batman. once? He retired from crime fighting years ago. Harley you know, Quinn almost figured it out. Wait a minute, after decades of secrecy, a punk teenager just happens to stumble into the Batcave? For crying out loud, if he'd found my secret lair, he'd have been vaporized. Joker did that once, yeah. in the animated continuity. Anyway, Terry's roller coaster of a day still wasn't over. Turns out, his dad got <laughs> murdered. I'll be mad, so... So he did what any emotionally charged teen who wants to avenge their dad would do. He stole the bat suit, but not the old cape and cowl of yesteryear. This was the latest and most advanced bat suit. Terry McInnes didn't just become the only bat man. He was Harlish. Batman Beyond. You ever wonder what would happen if Batman got a hold of an Iron Man suit? <laughs> it's basically that, and damn, he looks freaking red. The bat suit's nanotechnology greatly enhances his strength and provides several thin yet strong layers of ballistic and environmental hazard and resistance. He can fly. He can soar faster than How about that point, car, and he's really strong. nimble in the air. Plus, he can always give his punches and kicks a literal rocket boost. The suit sports yes. over two dozen other gadgets for combat and espionage. He has a wrist-mounted grappling hook that can extend over 50 feet. There's a cloaking device, a lock decoder, finger microphones, climbing claws, an underwater breather, thermal and binocular vision, Wouldn't that be the kind of thing that's arms, thing flashbang that's... grenades, triple-weighted bolas, a buzzsaw, and even retractable tweezers. Splinters are no laughing matter. <laughs> of course not. All those sweet, sweet batarangs. These new age ninja stars are even sharper and more compact than before. And they awesome. come in a variety of delightful flavors. Like explosive, ensnaring, and electrifying. Terry's got a solid throwing arm and can even disarm multiple opponents with a single shot. Sweet, and if he's sweet, the as you do. He can always just use his arm launchers to nice. fire battering discs. Also, when anyone gets in too close, the whole suit can act like a man-sized taser. The electric shock is strong enough cool. to stun people spliced with animal DNA and short out heavy machinery. But the tools don't make the man heard. Batman. Terry's a master martial People with artist. animal like DNA. From legends like former Keep Robin Dick Grayson, totally real ninja Kyrie Tanaga, and the former Dark Knight himself. Well, once he got over the kid stealing his suit, of course. Yeah. Bruce Wayne doesn't just serve as Terry's mentor. He's also a constant source of advice and information on the go through his... Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna pause here for a second. Did Bruce die in the last episode? The last he we saw of him... Was it a Beyond episode or was it a Justice League episode? The, the thing that wrapped up the DC animated universe. Did Bruce die in that episode? Because last we saw of him, he was like overcome with illness, fumbling for his pills. But he had become so overwhelmed with hatred and um, 
Oh, golly. Uh, Knight Templar esh. Or esh? Esk ish. That, that he essentially lost his humanity, and uh, Terry just plain walked out on him. I thought that was neat. Bruce had become so consumed by his goal, and now that he was even just one step removed from it, he couldn't function. It was... It was weird, and you go back and watch something like Mask of the Phantasm, where he's uh, at his parents' grave saying, I never counted on being happy, and he's tempted to give up being the Batman because of that. Uh, and you go back and see where that gets him, and it's really sad. Uh, it's is direct link to the bat suit from the bat cave. Usual. Good thing too, since Terry's not exactly the world's greatest detective, at least <laughs> not compared to the old man. Bruce is extremely intelligent and an likely expert sixty plus, plus years. Likely sixty plus years. Isn't he in his eighties at this point? Because that would make it only thirty years in the future. And I'm pretty sure it's a lot farther Not only does it host one of the most powerful supercomputers on the planet, it's also completely dependent on its own hydroelectric power supply and isolated network. Still, I don't care who Bruce used to be. You can't get outside help though. Orders in your ears sounds annoying. Like your dad's always looking over your shoulder. Or at least I imagine, because I didn't have one. Well, Terry is Bruce Wayne's secret son. What? In an effort to ensure there would always be a Batman, government boogeywoman Amanda Waller had secretly overwritten Warren McGinnis's reproductive DNA with that of Bruce Wayne's. Like, he just blasting Wayne babies? It's like all the fun, but you could get out of any child support case. And bonus, <laughs> I guess Terry's father technically wasn't murdered. Good for him. Also, he's got all the benefits from Bruce's kick-ass genes. Even before going through combat training, Terry was a skilled fighter. Strong enough to send opponents flying with a single punch. In the suit, he's strong enough to lift large Defeated Superman. Boulder. He's even survived getting his leg trapped under Bruce Wayne's trophy penny. What's so special about a penny? Just look at it. Holy colossal currency, Batman! <laughs> the penny's diameter is easily 20 feet wide. And These are 19 dated from the 1940s. <laughs> this means the penny is likely composed of bronze and weighs around 166 tons. That's Unless he got it molded out of something else. The bones in your foot, but not Terry. He was up and at him like nothing happened. I mean, this guy's tough enough to take a missile to the face and then fall hundreds Multiple. of stories. And all he got out of it was a couple broken ribs. What's a penny as heavy as 33 monster trucks gonna do? He's quick enough to dodge gunfire, skilled enough uh, to defeat lizard people, and the Justice Lords. In a newer pain. suit, he could fire concussive oh. blasts and even outraced an intercontinental missile. Which can reach okay, speeds so about 15,000 miles per hour. That's over 19 times the speed of sound. Nice! He's still no Bruce Wayne, though. He's kind of a punk and doesn't have the amazing smarts or expertise of Batman Classic. You don't quite have his magnificent brain, for instance. You do have his heart, though. Looks like Maybe a not, but he has accomplished <laughs> feats equal to his predecessor, yeah, like fighting Superman and ending the Joker threat once and for all. Clearly, Terry McGinnis has more than earned the title of Batman. You're pretty strong for some clown who thinks he's Batman. I oh. am Batman. Don't call him a clown! <laughs> so, here's an unfortunate So he's not allowed to use outside help, though. Kinda sucks. Plagued yeah. by a massive civil war between humans and mutants, the world had the itself world a god a once. Dystopian ruin of violence and anarchy. Don't blame Magneto. Had come to an end. But some people still wanted a sequel. Enter Miguel O'Hara, a child prodigy turned super genius with a penchant for genetic tinkering. Nuevo York. Nuevo York. One of the biggest companies in the world, mm. Alchemax, where he got to work trying to rebuild one Miggy. of the greatest heroes of all time, Spider-Man. Specifically, he attempted to replicate the DNA of Peter Parker. New yeah, Era said something like the world had but a god like once. It had multiple gods. Come on. Heroes, not much remained of Parker outside of stories and Unless they're talking Miguel about him. had to build his experiment from scratch, starting with a single, simple spider. Unfortunately, yeah. Alchemax didn't have the greatest job security. After yeah. a lot of bad blood and some spilled blood, 
Miguel wound up accidentally getting a dose of his own creepy crawly project, transforming him into the Spider-Man of 2099. All the right. Future Spider-Man isn't quite the same as your grandpappy Spidey. <laughs> I right. stand. the superhuman strength, speed, durability, and improved healing, Miguel's powers are entirely different. Unlike Parker, he can't actually stick to any surface. He can still walk. Now, did they have him there while they were filming the scene? And toes, which also make for fairly deadly weapons in a fight. Here. And he's got fangs like a vampire. If he bites you, he can inject a venom that can paralyze your whole body almost instantly. Also, he may not have Petey's trusty spider sense, but his sense of sight, smell, and hearing are super fine. He can hear noises from miles away, seeing the If he has increased smell, that means he has increased moving objects with ease. In fact, his senses are so acute, he wears tinted glasses to keep daylight from hurting his eyes. And like oh, I do that! Man, he can shoot webs from his hands! This is called photosensitivity, it's nothing special. devices on his wrists. He actually has organic spinnerets in his arms, which create and release thick, durable strings of webbing. Because they're natural, these strings are chemically identical to spider silk, with a tensile strength similar to steel. Ew. Okay, the original technically stronger than steel. Yep. Grossed me out, but this guy's powers are disgusting. I Yay. think Miguel would agree with you. Well, yeah. One day he's just he's got three, six doing right. sexy stuff like you, are and then the the he's got big lumps in his arms which shoot sticky stuff. Who wouldn't be weirded out? Miguel <laughs> saw his newfound oh. power as a curse, a blight which turned him into an inhuman freak of nature. But that huh, didn't stop as you do. crime, complete with his own spidey suit. His original costume was made from unstable molecules, allowing and that fan to be shot tearing the fabric. He also wears a web-like cape made of light bite, which lets him glide through the air. Whoa, light bright! I remember that. <laughs> oh, those are so cool! Did they find a way to stop you losing those little pegs? Light bite. Yeah, whatever. The suit looks Poor pretty Oster cool, it's so like I hate devil. to spoil the mood, but Actually, a Day of the Dead a costume. costume. From a Day of the Dead festival. No, really. Though after meeting the present-day Peter Parker, Miguel received a much-needed upgrade. <laughs> His new suit Okay, which one of them traveled through time? Oh, for God's sakes! Video will play after ad? What? His new suit contains synthesized unstable molecule fabric mixed with Kevlar, greatly improving his defense. This suit can He's survive a shot suits. from a howitzer artillery cannon. A common M777 says nothing short of a howitzer. Which would mean a howitzer does feet per second. That hits with over 100 tons of force. Miguel's even taken a hit from the thing, a hit which shattered a tempered glass window and sent the still alive. Over well, I guess he's made of rock. And the new suit has explosives, hologram projectors, infrared scanning, and it's even got wings and rocket boosters on the feet. Wait, that sounds familiar. Miguel may be a genius, but he's at his best when he's working with his holographic <laughs> sister, Lila. You're or back? No, this is my friend. Approximation. She's basically like the future Alexa with a bunch of extra features. She keeps track of Miguel's life signs and surroundings. With Lila's scanners and his super senses, anyone would have a hard time trying to sneak up on future Spidey. While Lila was originally built as a home appliance, she can be stored on Miguel's portable communicator. <laughs> she can act as an onboard lie detector and do advanced calculations to the 20th decimal in a millisecond. How could which she? is flippin' amazing. Fun fact, Lila's appearance was based on Marilyn Monroe. Arrgh. Not that anybody in 2099 seems to know who Marilyn Monroe was. But okay, seriously, it, how did they lose so much information in less than There was years? just someone Remember, kids, commenting, files, she's got a hugger, of Marilyn Monroe. Well, lucky for them, Miguel mm -hmm. got over his emo phase and started setting the future back on track. And he had the skills to do it. He's quick enough to dodge gunfire, tough enough to take a shotgun blast to the chest, resilient enough to tank electric shocks, and strong enough to rip a 20-ton turret off a tank. More nice. Than that, he helped another Spider-Man keep this giant building piece in place. What even is that? Likely some sort of antenna, but it also resembles the mooring mast atop the Empire State Building. Back when everybody thought Zeppelins were the hot new thing.